going to share with you not the glory story, but the glory story of how I come to know Jesus. So no one had invited me to church. I was living a dark, empty life. It was just a different day, but this particular night, I ended up mysteriously at my mom's house in her spare bedroom, and she lived in a neighborhood that wasn't so safe, so she would not have left her house unlocked. When I woke up the next morning in my mom's spare bedroom, I heard a voice speak to me and said, I brought you home last night, and I saw a vision of myself immediately collapsed over the steering wheel of my car. Well, when I heard this voice, I started to rationalize to myself, this couldn't be God speaking to me. I've done too many drugs and too much alcohol. I've probably lost my mind. And I went about my day doing the same old thing. Somebody called me, another party. I was just going to be there, just doing the same old thing a different day, a dark, empty life. And as I was headed down the highway on the road, to go where I was going. I wasn't yet stoned out of my mind. And I heard this voice speak to me again. It said, I brought you home last night. And I saw a vision of myself collapsed over the steering wheel of my car. Now I became very afraid. And I thought, I'm probably not going to survive what I'm about to do tonight. Somewhere in this town, there's got to be a church service going on. I'm just going to go to that church service, and I'm just going to be safe somewhere. I ended up in the old building across the street at Sheffield. I was on the very overflow of the building, and the service was almost at a close. And as I was sitting there, I could feel the devil talking to me. Just like in any service today, he's still the same liar, still telling the same lie. He was saying, this is for them people, but it's not for the likes of someone like you. And I got an agreement with him, and I was getting ready to leave and get on and get out of there. And at that exact moment, Pastor, Pastor Westlake, the old guy on staff, He said, someone the devil's lying to. They've told them that they've gone so far that God can't reach them. And my ear perked up and I thought, he's reading my mail. And at that exact moment, this lady came up out of the aisle. And she came over to me and she asked me, she said, would you like to go down forward and pray? And I wasn't offended at the word prayer. I had grew up in a Catholic church, and we did a lot of praying. And there's a lot of people in that faith that may know Jesus, but I was not one of them. So I walked down forward to the very front, and I said this to God. I said, God, I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know why you're talking to me. I'm really afraid. But if it's true, I'll give you this life if you want it. And when I said that, I was sure he would not take me up on my offer. But it was not like that. See, it was like mercy ran to me. All the wrong choices and all the wrong decisions that I had made in my life. That day was the best decision I ever made. It is the best decision. Jesus set this old junkie free. Jesus is still keeping this girl free. He's keeping me free from fear and desires that are wrong for me because he's the kind of a God that continues to save his people. Can somebody give him praise in the house? Praise God. Elizabeth had one of the greatest prison ministries in America.